all I, all I took out of it was this close up of him with it's at night and there's this red background on the building and it looks evil <laughs> like it does look <laughs> yeah. bad. And I always think you have like a hundred people doing PR for you. How? Yep. How does this happen? It's a Tuesday edition here on Zero Block 30. And today we have three rounds of the magazine. Round number one, Fat Leonard, that fat fuck. Can we say that, Kate? No. Okay, it's Fat Leonard, that chubby Leonard. bastard. Husky Leonard. Thank Husky you. Husky Leonard is a scandal that, uh, that affected 60 admirals and now the namesake is on the lamp just before the trial begins. They wanted to have him on house arrest. They wanted to have him all kinds of stuff. Turns out, flight risk. This is a juicy, juicy story that affected so many at the top of the Navy. Round number two, for your situational awareness, we want to tell you what vabbing is. It's incredible. We don't know if it's going to work, but we'll give it a try. And finally, round number three, a serious round today, because I actually got to sit down with one of the attorneys who work with, for the CIA and he is the guy that went through all of Hillary Clinton's emails, like on the database. Oh. He it's got the gefilte to... fish. Remember that yeah. email? Everyone. Gefilte fish. Explain, Kate. <laughs> One of the emails is about gefilte fish. And it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it went mega viral because I don't know. True. Okay, he that... did talk about Great that one. by me to kick off the show. He, he didn't talk about that one. But he did okay. talk about some of the trials that he did or the cases that he had with like Manning, Snowden, some of the other huge cases that have involved national security and top secret details and things like that. If it's happened in the last 15 years, he's been involved. So he went through the different sheets, all the different information, and he broke it down pretty Barney style. So I'll I'll be up front at the beginning when we're telling you about the show. It is probably the most out of my depth that I've been on any interview in six years of this show. <laughs> <Because there's, laughs> That's always fun when you feel like you're just drowning and trying to keep your head above water talking to somebody. Anything combat story related, I could kind of like bullshit my way around and act like I know. These terms, the level of secrecy that goes on, I had no idea. And I was tripping over myself. So listen to the interview. It's great information just so you have plenty of fodder that you can actually make fun of me for later as well. It's a good interview. I just did probably as poor as I ever have. So that's a good teaser for the show. <laughs> but all of that is going to be brought to you by our good friends at Whistlepig. If you haven't tried Whistlepig yet, what are you waiting for? It's the best whiskey in the biz. You can get it at your local store. You can get it online. They have all kinds of stuff. They have the little Uncle Hammy thing. Bonnie and Clyde, Butch Cassidy, Sundance, Brady and Gronk. But the next legendary duo is Whistle Piggyback 100% Rye and their new Piggyback 100% Proof Bourbon. They have a new bourbon coming out. Mm. Always keeping it 100. Whistle Pig match their Piggyback 100% Rye with their Piggyback 100 Proof Bourbon. Uh, Piggyback 100 Proof Bourbon stands as a taller, bur uh, bolder than the pack. And no other bourbon or rye duo on the market offers this big of an age proof and mash for a full scent of flavor. Fla I don't know if we're allowed. To are we allowed to say Flavor Town here? Flavor Village? I think so. I think it's out of this world. <laughs> yeah, it is out of this world. Try it. It's 100% proof, which means it's 50% alcohol by volume. It's a strong fella. So, or lady, depending on who you are, go to shop.whistlepig.com or go to a local store to pick it up. Whistle Pig. It's this fantastic. Whistle Pig's a mean old bitch who don't take shit from nobody. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's right. Sure. We need to get it for that TikTok. Maybe fella. not. Get get him chugging on thirsty. We Thursday. do our devil dog friend. Yes, and that's better than the peanut butter liquor that he drinks now, which is uh, that's a boot move. I mean, this guy it is he's an old crusty Vietnam era or probably mid eighties era Marine, and he's out here drinking peanut butter whiskey. Bad look for the whole core, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Got to do doing. whistle pig, my friend. All right, let's get going with the actual show today. First up, how was your weekends? Long weekends for everybody. Cons, we'll start with you. Ah, overall, unbelievable weekend. I was down at my my in-laws, uh, my, my brother and sister-in-law, and they're the types of people that when you stay at their house, it feels like you're staying at a hotel. Just they roll out the red carpet each and every time. So that was very awesome. I, I actually have to give uh, a shout out to um, the United States Naval Academy. So I was there for the Navy and Delaware game. And those folks were very hospitable. They were very nice. There were a few folks within the athletic department who reached out to me and made sure I was very much taken care of. So that was very, very nice of them despite my allegiances elsewhere. But I, I tip my hat to them because it really was first class all the way. Big, big shout out to 
my buddy though, Ryan Cardi, coach of Delaware Blue Hens. I, it was just, it was really, really cool to, to see him get his first win as a head coach. I didn't think I'd get as emotional as I did. I, I saw him after the game and I gave him a big hug and I was kind of tearing up and just really, really proud of him. So that was just very cool to see him because he's been on the come up in the, the football Dude, world. The as coaching a coach. world's crazy. Like how long, how much time you got to put yeah. in and how, like, yeah, that's pretty yeah. nuts. You have to really be on top of your shit. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, real, for a head coach, he's, he's considered a young head coach. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people saw the clip by now. He, he dropped a big old F bomb in the post game interview, which was a fart. <laughs> uh, yes. Big mm-hmm. old fart. Mm-hmm. No. Um, and then, I uh, you know, obviously farted. That's how excited I was <laughs> when that clock t- to zero. I fucking ripped one. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately army lost. Uh, we lost, you know, coastal Carolina, I think is going to have another good team again. Um, so I'm not overly upset about that. One thing I wanted to, to, to mention though. So I'm at the tailgate and my niece is a senior at uh, Delaware. So all her friends on the lacrosse team are at the tailgate. So they want to ask you like, Oh, what's so-and-so like at Barstool? And listen, we work with great people at Barstool. So I don't ever have, have anything to say. How many times negative. they asked about me? They asked about you. They did. And they're like, what's she like? How is she? Is she She's cool? Tough ass bitch who drinks yeah. like so big. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Not drinking any of that pussy shit with peanut butter. Yeah. Okay. Um, but no, so you know, even if we worked with somebody who was a jerk, I wouldn't publicly say that to somebody I didn't know. So I would I would always just lie, even if it wasn't true. Sorry if that's an integrity violation. I see that as protecting uh somebody else. But so I guess I you get asked about the same people all the time. And I, I've started to do this thing where I just make stuff up that's just completely bonkers. Like they're like, oh, oh, you know, like what's what's Brianna Chicken Fry like, or what's Alex Bennett like? And you're like, oh, she's really nice, but she does this thing where she sits at her desk and she just eats ketchup right from the ketchup packets all day for lunch, like forty ketchup packets, yeah. and it's kind of odd. And you see their face, like really. And I'm just like, yeah, I know, and I can't explain it. That's but then I eventually something I do, so. <laughs> Okay. No, I eventually tell them it's it's fun, but you you get asked all the time like, oh, what's so and so like? You can always say so many times like, oh, they're really great person. But, you got to make it up. Fun, uh, fun yeah. side note: I used to party when I worked at Happy Days, a fifties diner. Uh, I used to party with a lot of the gals. It was summertime. They went to Delaware, mm-hmm. and I had a fake Delaware ID, and I used to go down there and party all the time before I when hey, I was cool. underage. I got my ID taken at a bar there because you can't idiot move using that state ID in that state. They're mm. going to know. Uh, yeah. And also it wasn't my face or my name and I forgot my address. So that a reminder helps. to remember those things. Yeah. But, yeah. But overall, um, very, very nice weekend for me. What about, uh, what about you, Kate? Made out with a guy with a whole thing. I ate a whole pack of Oreos and made out with a guy there once. So no, you were talking about this like, weekend. Jesus Christ. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, things no, in the Poconos were wild. Was a long, long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. Um, it's like, it seemed like you were having a very awesome weekend. I saw you out in the lake and you were chilling in the water. It seemed very nice. I yeah. did not know you were making out people with Oreo filled mouth. No, so Cash, my my son, he was off of daycare for 12 days. <laughs> I'm glad days. you clarified because yeah, you haven't talked you. about him sure. before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my, I have a son. So yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, he was off daycare for 12 days. Then this long weekend was coming up and you get kind of stir crazy in a small apartment for 12 days with a toddler. Mm-hmm. And so I packed him up and I took him out to the Poconos to it's this resort called the Shawnee Inn. I don't know if it's problematic. A lot of Native American imagery everywhere but not Native American owned, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it hasn't been updated. It was like a dirty dancing resort. Oh, but nice. It hasn't been updated since then. Mm. So like everything was falling apart and crusty and whatever. So I loved it. I was like, we're right at home here. This is fine. But it also went right into the Delaware River and it had a beach with just plastic chairs and all the locals were just ripping Coronas in the plastic chairs and hanging out. My son was chasing Chihuahuas around. Like, it was just a delight. <laughs> it was right up our alley. I took him hiking. It's called the Niagara Falls of Pennsylvania. Uh, but it, it's a drought. <laughs> so, so there was no. There was like a couple trickles of water here and there. Um, he took a huge but dump. That's what you got to expect when you're at the Niagara Falls of Pennsylvania. You can't expect more than a trickle. Just a trickle. It was just a trickle. Um. But yeah, it was really fun. It is a lot like traveling with a little fella. Just it's yeah. I had some a couple of moments of like major meltdown breakdowns in front of a lot of people kind of thing. I want to I'm curious about that because I always think 
if it happens on a plane or in a store, I always think to myself, well, you know what? That, that probably is, stinks for that person. But I think at the same time, that's just what kids do. And everybody's kid did that at some point. So why be embarrassed? How do no, you, you always think your kid is the first kid that's ever done this. Yeah. And in the I moment, it's like... just like the worst feeling ever. Because you hate your kid. You want your kid to shut the fuck up. And everybody's looking at you like, get that kid to shut up. And you're like, I'm fucking trying here, dude. I've <laughs> well, been in we... this shit all day. Yeah. We Sorry that it's taking you longer to get your Snickers bar, you piece of shit. I had ordered dinner from the hotel to just take it up to the room because I know I can't eat eating out with him. It's just me and him. So it was like a lot to. You're not exactly a fast eater anyway. No. So oh. I order the takeout, but they're like, that'll be like 20 minutes. So I'm like, how do I keep him busy? He was hungry. How do I keep him busy until then? So we go out. The hotel had this big, giant, long patio with a bunch of rocking chairs looking out onto this lawn where a wedding was taking place. And the wedding had just started. It was quiet. And all the hotel guests, though, are out on the patio watching the wedding. And I take him out and I'm holding him. And he just looks, starts wiggling my arms. It goes. <laughs> he just screamed <laughs> at the top of his lungs and climbed up to my shoulders. Where, and I was like trying not to on the steps. And he's screaming at the top of his lungs. And I'm trying to get him inside. It was like <laughs> it was like this whole big thing. I get inside. And these two like moms who were clearly having a staycation away from their family. It was just mm. these two moms. They were drinking nooners in the lobby. And they were like, <laughs> they just like, <laughs> it was enjoyable for them to see another mom struggling. Oh, mother. used to yeah. be there. <laughs> I remember yeah. the days. Yeah. And also, finally, the last note, there was this little brewery right behind the building with like a big outdoor space. And I was just sitting there. I only had one beer. It was just, I was like, oh, I'll just try blueberry beer. And I got him to sit down next to me to watch his guitars playing. And there was a bunch of stoolies that were like, yo, Kate, are you just here? by yourself i'm like yeah just crushing beers with my son at this it was I guess you had to be there how was your weekend <laughs> it was fine i went to dave and buster's which made me feel awesome uh, me and cardi had like the greatest time yesterday we dropped like 100 bucks on games very intense games of skee ball they have some new games there they have a new game there called dodgeball where you they have like fake targets and you get the regular balls and you get to whip them as fast as you can at these things. That's the cool. Harder you hit somebody, the more points you get. And they oh, have axe that. throw and all kinds of stuff. It was a great time doing that. Also, this is probably the biggest news of the weekend. I've turned into a like incense. I like in I like when my office smells good because Annalise sure. gets the Figure out what the upstairs is going to smell like. Oh, you're an incense guy. I, I'm not an incense guy. Oh, but let me. Sh I was at this taps. place and I saw this. It's almost like show and tell. Hold on. Oh, God. Any store I go into that has incense, immediate headache. I can't stand it. Yeah. And it this incense is not something to fuck around with at all. Look how long this incense oh, is. Oh, man. That's God. Are you going to start wearing a drug rug? Are you going to put a little tapestry up in the background? Maybe it's 19 <laughs> inches. This is 19 <laughs> inches of incense. Guess how long this bad boy lasts? A week. Three hours. It, okay. it is heavy smoke. <laughs> heavy. My whole office smells the high hell. It's awful. But I I mean, yeah. it's it's <laughs> see, I think incense. I think back to when I was an altar server and we had to do the incense at the funerals. And that's that stuff was just all up in your you nostrils. You get a chalice, like a mace chalice thing to swing around. You could kill yeah. somebody with that thing. Yeah. It's called morning that's, that's glory. My incense. There you go. Look at you, hippie chaps. Getting a little hippie-ish with it. Stinks. I don't Hell know. yeah. I don't like that in here more than like once a week. Anyways, let's get going with the um, story about Fat Leonard. Kate, what we have for Husky round one number Leonard, one. Please. All right. The military contractor. And by the way, this comes to us from the San Diego Tribune, who has been San Diego Tribune's awesome. They've been tra they track a lot of the I mean, I guess there's so many I'd say anything there. California based Marine or Navy. They are the number one source of information to go to. Oh, yeah. Hot, hot patoot. So for there, San Diego Tribune, uh, the military contractor known as Fat Leonard, the mastermind behind the worst. In round number two, we're going to suck off the Cincinnati Inquirer. It's going to be great. Oh, <laughs> you know, we love that one. Uh, for anything, any military, any veterans in Cincinnati are acting up there. The ones you want to go to. Oh, yeah. Uh, the military contractor known as Fat Leonard. He's the mastermind behind the worst public corruption scandal in U.S. Navy history, and he was only three weeks away from being sentenced in the case. Well, guess what? He is gone. 
Nobody can find his ass anywhere. It says that he's on the run. I wish he would have went that he's on the shuffle, 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 because this fella is pretty big. He ain't going to be running many places. <laughs> he's not running anywhere. Uh, Leonard Glenn Francis. And Leonard Glenn is just so heavy. Like, oh, yes. Leonard's heavy enough as it is Glenn. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Leonard Glenn It sounds Glenn like Francis. the three names of a podcast on Barstool. It does. Um, He has been under house arrest. Well, he cut off his GPS monitoring ankle bracelet and absconded from his San Diego mansion sometime Sunday morning, according to. How do you do that? How do you cut those things off? I thought they were indestructible. No, man. Scissors. Oh, okay. Pat's (laughs) mom got us these badass scissors for Christmas. You can cut through a penny with those things. Okay. I don't want to brag. I'll show you guys after the show. It's sick. Cutting Uh, shit up radio. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Francis, a Malaysian national who ran his military contracting firm, Glenn Defense Marine Asia, out of Singapore, was arrested in a San Diego hotel room in 2013 as part of a federal sting. His company serviced visiting Navy ships in ports that he controlled access to across Southeast Asia. And for years, he bribed U.S. Navy officials, many of them in the Seventh Fleet, for their influence and access to military intel, allowing him to earn millions of dollars from Navy contracts. So basically, They'd give him a heads up. He knew what military ships were coming and when and going and what they needed and blah, blah, blah. So he'd be the first to put in for these contracts. And then he was also bribing them. So he'd get the contracts and he was bilking. Say maybe I'm making this up. Say it cost a million dollars to clean a ship when it came into port. He would charge like triple that. And somehow it always got through. He was always the one who won the contract in these ports. Um, Some background on that whole thing. We're talking at least half a million dollars in bribes, fancy pants travel expenses. So he would take these officers and send them on fancy trips. He'd buy them luxury items. And of course, prostitutes. They were oh, fucking, yeah. okay. And that was a huge part of it. He was getting a lot of these high ranking officers, prostitutes. The initial naval officer co conspirators labeled themselves as the cool kids and the wolf pack. Just okay. Awful. Just, they, I, I mean, mean that's. Ex- this is exactly what I picture naval officers as just a bunch of fucking dorks. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The kids who got bullied all through school growing up and then, you know, finally have gotten a little attention and they're like, yeah, guys, we're cool. And they come up with these lame ass names. It's unbelievably terrible. The cool but kids. It's cool also kids. kind of terrifying that high ranking naval officers were willing to sell out. And so many of them were willing to sell out so quickly for uh, a trip to like a sn- go snorkeling and bang a hooker. You know what I mean? And that like, point is was really highlighted by one of the former secretaries of the Navy, Ray Mabus, who was talking about this situation and how almost all officers that were in that fleet and in that region of the world were involved. It almost, I told cons before, it almost is like the naval version of McCarthyism, where if you got pointed out by McCarthy, the it was like you were communist. You were communist until you mm-hmm. weren't. And you had to prove yeah. yourself. If you were mentioned by Fat Leonard, by Leonard Francis, you were part of this until you weren't. So they had the presumption of guilt. you probably were. Yeah, you had the <laughs> like, presumption of guilt rather than innocence. As soon as he said your name, they thought you were in. And to the point where it was 60 different admirals. Now, when we're talking about admirals, that's high-ranking folks. Everybody is 07 and above. There's not a whole lot. So to have 60 right. implicated is a I would that's got to be I mean at the minimum I don't know how many admirals the navy has but I would bet that's got to be at least like 10% right yeah, like I was going to say this 600 probably, admirals know, in the navy that would be a lot I was going to say there's probably only a few hundred it, it's not a rank that most people reach so for there to be 60 is significant then again you know you're far from home you're hanging out with the other admirals. You guys are all good buddies. And you hear them whispering about how they're in the wolf pack. Well, I, I want to be in the wolf pack. You know, I <laughs> right, you want to be in enough. that. So fair basically, enough. we're having this story because this this thing changed the way that they're doing contracts. It changed the way that they're looking at like the IGs, how the IG operates. This is a big fucking deal. And they thought for a long time that Fat Leonard was going to testify against all the other military members. And that's not going to happen. They weren't. He wasn't going to do it. But now he's on the land because he knew that he was going to most likely go to prison too. quick point. So to go along with my adult theme park where you get to be in high speed chases and like escape from the cops or be the cops and try to chase somebody. I would like for there to be a compound where you get to go be on the land. I'd like that to be part of my amusement park where you get to like hide and try to avoid and you have to go into a little made up town and, and interact with people. But you're on what the land, climate, so maybe... though, cons, what climate are you trying to go to? Oh, I would love to do this up in like Colorado somewhere. So it's not hot. I, I need it to I be would... cooler out for me. The same exact setting that 
Mark Wahlberg is at in Shooter when the helicopter yes. lands at the end and he pops up and he's like, yep. ha ha ha, right there. Mm. That kind of go. scenery would be awesome. Yeah. I'm not yeah. doing swamps or in that. Show. I've, I always no, think when I'm driving swamps. by swamps mosquitoes? and like, I always think if I escape from prison and then I landed on the other side of the fence and it was swamp, I'd be like, ah, never mind. Nah, I'm not doing <laughs> that. Like when they did it. She'd go to the front things. door. Can you guys let me back in, please? Yeah. <laughs> this last season of Stranger Things, when they escape from the Russian prison and they're in like Siberia, buddy. Yeah. What are you doing then? If you, honest to God, if I got, if I got sentenced life in prison in Siberia, that's it for me. Nope. Not doing that. Not and you it. could befriend a wolf. You could become part of a wolf pack. Maybe there's some admirals out there who are very good point, them. Kate. Very good point. But anyway, I, I also want to say too, like as all this bribery shit was going on back in the 2000s, like year after year after year, people tried to whistleblow and be like, "Hey, this guy is like bilking the navy out of millions of dollars. Like this guy is doing bribes, like all this shit." Um, but he had informants and moles and spies. And whenever he would catch wind of an investigation or that somebody was trying to be a whistleblower, he would get them fired. He would get ahead of whatever was going on. Like you can look up in 2006 and 2007. It there's just case after case of this happening. But finally, it took them three years of investigations. He finally got got. So in 2015, he admitted to the massive bribery conspiracy and to swindling the Navy out of at least 35 million in overcharges. Um, but after several bouts with health issues, including kidney cancer, Francis was released on medical furlough and has been on house arrest since at least 2018. Uh, he's been under the supervision of pretrial services and pretrial services is a federal agency that monitors defendants who are out on custody until sentencing. It's basically so, probation. Yeah. So both behind bars and later while on home confinement, Francis worked as a cooperating witness. So then he flipped. Uh, for federal prosecutors who built cases against the others involved in the scheme, including high ranking Navy officers. See, so and I don't of, think this should be allowed. I yeah. don't think the person at the it's top like of the pyramid scheme right? should be able to inform on the lower ones. It should be always the other one. Like, why are you going after smaller fish when the biggest fish is there? I guess because they were the uniform members. And then you could make the argument that it's worse for the uniform right. members to be doing this than the like the foreigner contractor mm -hmm. right i think because Absolutely he's a foreigner is. and they're like okay fuck you for doing this but we need to focus in-house and what's happening yeah, here is like that makes sense I see it. yeah um so yeah. his sentencing date had been put off for years as he assisted prosecutors basically a rat here in jersey am i right gons we'd call this guy a rat mm -hmm. fucking brat yeah. uh rest in he, peace big he, inch for anyone to watch that show mob wives anyways his sentencing date has been put off for years as he assisted prosecutors and prepared he was supposed to be the star on the witness stand in the trials earlier this year against five former naval officers. But for reasons unknown, Francis was never called to testify. Four of the officers were convicted. The jury deadlocked on the fifth. Twenty nine others, Navy officers, defense contractors, yada, yada. Um, and Francis, people within his organization have pleaded guilty with Francis's usefulness to prosecutors seemingly at its end. A sentencing date was set for him for September 22nd. Pre-trial services, uh, the federal agency monitoring Francis, was alerted to an anomaly with his bracelet, and Francis's defense team went to check on him, knowing he had a history of health issues. Oh, my is mind, this that bitch dead? <laughs> in my mind, they're like, so pre-trial services gets like the wee, 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 Fat Leonard's bracelet has been cut. I'm sure that's exactly what a big alarm goes off. Fat yeah. Leonard's bracelet Kinda has like, been cut. Kind of like on wee, wee. the first kid when it's like, dad, not detected. Dad, not found. No, no, no. That was Richie for, Rich. Yeah, Richie, Richie Rich. Rich. Dad, yeah. not found. Dad, but I not picture found. them being yeah. like, like, hey, they call Francis's defense, Fat Leonard's defense team. Like, take your time. Stop at Duncan for a coffee. He's got cancer and a bum leg. I'm sure he's there. No worries. So they get over there. An attorney called San Diego police at about 1.45 p.m. saying Francis was not answering yeah. the knocks or messages. <laughs> They asked for a welfare check at the home in the Tory Highlands neighborhood. And if you know that area, Tor this guy was living in a fucking mansion. Yeah, like he nice was area. living That's just nice. fine. Um, and I'm thinking it's like they're maybe thinking it's like home alone. He's not answering the wellness check. He's probably in there watching a gangster movie, eating ice cream. You know, he's probably jumping on the bed. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Officers enter the home through an unsecured door in a central courtyard. And the house is empty, save for the sheer GPS bracelet left behind. The U.S. Marshals were called to assist, and the San Diego Regional Fugitive Task Force also joined, as well as NCIS, which more than a decade ago 
first arrested him and they're probably like are you guys fucking here serious? we go again are you fucking serious neighbors this is the best part this is neighbors in the gated community told authorities that they had seen a U- u-haul moving trucks going in and out of francis's home for days leading up to this <laughs> how do you not i mean i guess because if you're in pretrial you're it's not like you're going to check them every day like that's not no. how any of that stuff works and if his bracelet's still at home it's still at home but when you're looking at it you're like god nobody thought hey this dude that every every neighbor knows this right like if you're a neighbor well so you that's know what that I your wonder. neighbor's on pre-trial but would Maybe. you know necessarily? We'll say it not. says yeah. here it was not known if neighbors knew that he was the tenant of the sprawling multi-million dollar home, uh, which by the way has five bedrooms and seven baths, and no one reported the moving trucks as suspicious. Um, he was planning he was planning this out, that's for sure, said one of the uh, marshals. You think? So yeah, no kidding. I, I also think too, like on behalf of pretrial services and his attorneys, like everybody knew that those other trials had come to an end. And that his usefulness had come to an end and that his court date had been set. Everybody and knew he has money. He's got money and he's a slime ball. And so nobody thought like, well, maybe we should check. And all they would have to do is drive by his house and see him moving out for days and days. If I had to guess, this guy's somewhere. He's going to be living in a Mexican villa somewhere in the boondoggles for a hot minute. I mean, he might just um, go back home, honestly. Like, why would not just go back to the Pacific if he has all those connections? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also he's right on the coast, so it wouldn't be that hard to get. Like, he probably had, like a lovely mega yacht waiting to take it. Like, he could be anywhere so easily. If you have money, nobody's looking at you like you're a bad guy. You can you can get pretty fucking far. A lot I wonder how men- far you can get in one of those mega yachts before you run out of gas. Not very far. They, I mean, you have to get refilled and stuff. They don't get very many. I think sail they, a they yacht get like less than a mile a gallon. Yeah, oh, with wow. a sail and a hot crew, oh. that would be a reality show I'd watch. Uh, oh, below yeah. deck below fat deck Leonard. fat leonard it's yeah. almost like prison break but mixed with the high seas and also yes. he probably figures like he's got cancer he's his body's falling apart he probably figures what the fuck do i have to lose why the fuck right. would i wait around if i have this money? worst case like, scenario you got to go to jail like, like that's where he's going him? anyways right can you blame him no i Who mean if it's a long <laughs> sentence if you're looking at 20 years and this guy's like 65 yeah so why not i mean they're Investigators are checking to see if he's at the U.S.-Mexico border crossings, if they've seen his plates, uh, but he may have already crossed south. So they're thinking he's gone south to Mexico. I would throw him for a loop and go Canada, quite honestly. True. Good point. Up there somewhere. Mm. But I'm interested to see. I don't think you have that much money. If somebody that I'll say it large and kind of slow is able to just dip out and like take his sweet time in everyone's face and do it. I don't think they're going to catch him. Maybe not. Maybe mm. not. All right, let's move on to round number two. It's going to be presented by our good friends at Romans. Roman swipes are convenient over-the-counter swipes that are clinically proven to help you last longer in bed. They're uniquely formulated to reduce overstimulation without eliminating sensation together. Um, because, folks, whenever you're having sex, you want to feel it. You don't want to feel like you got a shot of Novocaine in your genitals whenever that's going on. You want to feel all the True. sensations. Roman will help you do that. They have a dissolvable swipe from its discreet uh, pocket size pack. They wipe it on the most sensitive parts of your penis, allow it to dry for five minutes. And when you use it as directed, Roman swipes leave no scent and there's no transfer to your partner. They are safe, affected, and no prescription is needed. All swipes order include a two day shipping and will arrive in an unmarked package. You could try it as little for $2.75 per swipes. Try swipes today with a special offer just for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order at getroman.com slash ZBT today. That's getroman.com slash ZBT for 20% off. Let's move on to round well, number two, which you know is why, nature's Roman swipe, I would say. You know why it's good Roman swipes are not scented? Why? Why? Because you want that pussy scent. <laughs> okay. True. Okay. Because that's what round number that's two is That's right, about. Kate. That's, that's right. That's what round number two is about. I'm not just true. talking about. Or if you're a fella, maybe you don't want that. Maybe you just want penises everywhere, and that's fine. Or butthole. Or butthole. That's yeah. fine, too. But you probably don't want that scented. Or maybe you do. Everyone's got a thing. No, yeah. They're Anyways, all a little aphrodisiac. Yeah. Um, so this is more. It's not really a safety brief, though. At, at the end, I will include a little bit of one. It's more of a know your surroundings kind right. of thing. Right. Yeah. Situational, yeah. Situational, situational awareness. Situational awareness. Yeah. Uh, if you're wondering what the various TikTok reactions to the trending term vabbing are all about, then we've got you covered. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has nothing to do with dabbing, which is we well, take like the weed. Uh gel right yeah, I sound like, like such a, a wax like, yeah yeah or vaping or somewhere in between 
It's more of an unconventional technique women are using to attract a partner by dabbing their vaginal secretions in places you put perfume, like behind your ears or on your wrist or maybe the, the neck, the well, nape of the, the neck. nape of the neck. So when you go to hug somebody, they're like, oh, God, that person smells so great. Um, <laughs> and that works. I mean, I don't know about pussy, but it works with cologne. I have this cologne that's like a hard cologne that goes into a little tin and you're oh, supposed yeah, to rub it. You showed me that stuff. And you that rub it on. Cool on your like heat points and it does yeah. like whenever you're wearing it, it makes it emit more. So I could see this pussy juice on your neck working. Well, you know how sometimes when you don't wash your clothes and you're like, mm -hmm. shit, it's Monday and I didn't do my laundry and you spray your clothes a little bit with cologne or whatever. I just rub my vagina all over my tights. <laughs> That's what yeah. I, I'm like. Ah. <laughs> like a chihuahua in heat. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, the theory. Supposedly, don't rub your ass on the carpet again, Kate. <laughs> I just go scooting across my jeans when that happens. Ugh, so I just lay all my worms. dirty laundry out and scoot. Uh, the theory. Supposedly, the natural scent contains pheromones, which can attract potential partners and influence romantic activity. Mm -hmm. A number of women have been sharing their experiences of vabbing on their TikTok accounts, with many singing its praises. I did it right before I went to the gym, and then that guy hit on me while I was working out. Vabbing works, said TikToker Julia, a uh, regular vabber, told her viewers. Sexologist and psychotherapist Carolyn, Carlin Costa, longtime stoolie mm -hmm. psychotherapist Carolyn Costa, mm -hmm. has been open about vabbing with her followers, explaining that she has used the technique for around 20 years, but with current partners. So, guys, fellas, if you're listening out there and you're with a lady and you're thinking, ah, man, I don't know when I fell in love with her. Maybe she's been rubbing lizzie juice on herself and you didn't know mm -hmm. it. Put some extra stank on it, too. Maybe putting some extra stank on it. Okay. Yeah. I employ vabbing or encourage vabbing and recommend it as part of a mating ritual with a current lover that already loves your juices, she said. <laughs> Christ. I do vab a little bit in my pressure point so that when my lover comes over, he's getting the ultimate sense of me. It drives people wild. And I love it so much. This reminds me of that Saturday Night Live sketch with like a real hairy... Um, What's his oh, name? Will Ferrell. Up, and he's my like, hello, lover. hello, my lover. Oh, oh yes, lover. Do you and, want uh, to? And Rachel, Rachel Dratch. Rachel Dratch. Yeah. My lover's in, in the, the hot jacuzzi tub, yeah. in the hot tub. In the hot tub. <laughs> uh, the, and responding to various comments that have expressed disgust at the te technique, she said, I have zero shame about how I show up in this world. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Which is the energy you have to have. Right. Yeah. Your if you're a babber, you got to just come out the <laughs> gate swinging. I will say, this is my safety brief. I have a okay. couple rules for you. Mm -hmm. uh, wash your hands. Right. I'm washing before, mm -hmm. because what if you're eating hot wings? True. And then you go to VAB. You don't want a Carolina Reaper in there when you're giving the old-fashioned Carolina squeezer. Exactly. You certainly don't. So wash your hands before, and then wash them after. Because you don't want to uh, go and peel an apple for somebody, for your coworker. And it turns out, you watch them eat, and you're like... <gasps> Uh-oh, forgot. They don't want a vabbed apple. Yeah. Right. Uh, not allowing areas you vabbed to touch anything or anyone. So <laughs> if you're like me and you're you're using it. Oh, to... Careful, I vabbed on that. Yep. Right. You don't want to. <laughs> right. You got to keep people away from the areas you vab. <laughs> oh, whoa. That your toothbrush? My bad. Right. A lot of these ladies are vabbing at the gym. So mm -hmm. you want to wipe down your gym equipment. Mm -hmm. People forget. Uh, refraining from vabbing if you're on your period. True. Right? Good or, tip, Kate. Because sometimes I forget and I come in looking like I've been jungle to jungle. You know, I come in looking like I've got a blow dart. I'm ready to kill right. a squirrel. Yeah. You can't do that. Like you're about to star in the new remake of The Arab there. Exactly. Yes. What precisely. a great movie. Um, you. Also, if you have a Jimmy sexually Dolan's shake and bake. True. Love that movie. <laughs> if you have a sexually transmitted disease, it's no shame in it. We're all in the military. I'm sure we've all dabbled in chlamydia from time yeah. to time. No one's Who here to doesn't judge. have a head of cauliflower between their legs from genital warts? <laughs> Chaps, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> right. Who among us? Right. But if that is the case, you maybe don't want to be vabbing. True. Okay. Uh, making sure you get checked by a professional. If you're vabbing and you think that doesn't smell or that does smell good, that's a uh, that smells like stank old shrimp. Cooch, you don't want to vab. Yeah, and I'll say this: P listen, pussies smell. They have a smell to them. They do. And depending on what time of month your your pH and your whatever, fellas, there's going to be some kind of vibe, but it shouldn't be. 
Anyway, watch out for that. So, fellas, uh, if you oh, want also, some good pants, fellas, make sure you go with bird dogs. <laughs> if you don't have any bird dog pants, sweatpants or joggers, mm-hmm. you're missing out because they're the most comfortable bottoms of all time. All of them are available with or without the built in underwear. They have the pants, stretch khaki slacks that feel like sweats. You can wear them to work. They have the joggers. I wear them all the time. But the best pants planes, I would say, like I, I are plain pants, because whenever you wear them on the plane, one uncomfortable flyers have got to go. I feel so bad for these businessy folks that are wearing suits and shit on a plane being yeah. just so unbelievably uncomfortable. You should go with our friends at bird dogs and then change into your business attire. When you get out, you could do this by going to bird dogs.com, go to bird dogs.com into the promo code zero and they're throwing a free bird dogs, white rope hat. That's bird dogs.com promo code zero and boom, a free white hat with a, a pair of your bird dogs are going to show up the most comfortable bottoms with the built in liners. Feel the comfort of the built-in liners today. If you're swimming, if you're doing whatever, you could just throw them on. You don't even need an extra pair of underoos in your bag. Amazing. I think what's great about bird dogs too is you don't look like a slob either. I think there, there's a difference between being comfortable on a plane and looking like a total bag of crap. Mm-hmm. So with, with bird dogs, you're still going to look very presentable. That's mm-hmm. true. Um, and they have the built-in boxers. So if your lady's vabbing, you're still being <laughs> held in place. The pheromones aren't getting you going. You're being held in place. Yeah, you don't want to be too much no of a nerves. boner on a plane. You want no, to make sure that's, that that's how you go viral, my friends. I was watching The Bachelor last night, and it Why? was very, it was very kind of them. There was this dude he was sitting out with his new lover, like who's also been lover. having sex with multiple people um, throughout, which is fine. I don't know if that's something that I would want to deal with. Like while I was trying to find a potential partner of them also banging down a bunch of other folks. I'm not sure if I would be into that, but Mm -hmm. they're sitting on the beach. Lovely scene. They gave this fella a towel to put in his lap because they were going to do some light kissing while she was in a thong and all wet and shit. And they're like, this dude is going to get a fucking boner. Yeah. If he'd have just been wearing a bird dogs, they'd have just been like, let that boner flag fly, my friends. We're going to secure it because we got boxers. the built in liners. Yep. Just tuck that Their thing. Just fucking pads. tuck it in. Call it Justin. Justin Tuck is what they do there. All right. Let's <laughs> move on to the interview that I have with. Uh, it's an important interview. It's a very <laughs> important topic. And we I, let into I always it with some wonder, ridiculous shit. <laughs> I feel like we always have like real. I call them real people. Serious human beings. With real jobs. Uh, I feel like we have them on the show, but always when we have these people on the show, these impressive people, the topics before that right are before. like are yeah. like silly hat radio. It's like <laughs> and then it's like, and now we have something very serious to talk about. But I think it's because we only we know we only have a certain amount of time that we can right. be serious. Like we have to have the other us. parts. And even when I'm emailing people like this guy, because this guy's resume is incredibly impressive. Like the things that he's done, the things that he's seen, the information that he knows, it doesn't tell anybody else is just impressive whenever you think about all those different things. So I'll email them a more professional style of email whenever I'm asking them to come on the show. I've read your email and seen a lot of your professional correspondence and all blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then they'll be like, sure, dude. Yeah, I'd love to. And they reply back like a normal person. And I'm like, Oh, well, now I look like a fucking idiot. That's exactly what happened here. He was super cool. And how is a big old nerd? Let's have him on the show. Here he is. All right. For those that have been listening to this show for a long time, you know, we're not very smart in international matters. We're not very and we are honest about it. I think that's what separates us from a lot of military shows. We don't know the ins and outs of top secret and all the different levels. So we wanted to bring on somebody who could. And I found a great one. His name is Brian Greer. He's a former attorney with the CIA's Office General Counsel from 2010 to 2018. He served as the chief of staff to general counsel. And so you could already see there's a lot more that's going on after that bio. But he's been involved with some big cases like last names of Mannings and Snowden and Clinton. So you might want to hear from him. Brian Greer, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. Thanks so much for having me. Happy to be here. Yeah, so we're excited to talk to you because there's a lot of information floating around and depending on where you get your news from, that's basically the slant that it takes. So I wanted to just hop right in. And when you first get read in CIA attorney and things like that, how long does it take you to really grasp the ins and outs of the security of the United States, the classified system? Yeah, the classification regime is very complicated and coming into it as being someone new to it, it it definitely takes um, some getting used to. I'd say I was in the job for at least six months or so before you really fully grasp it. And my job starting out was in litigation where your your job is to litigate 
classified information and it's to protect it in litigation. So I, I was more focused on it than your normal rank and file CI officer or any other IC officer. And it still, I think, took around that long to, to fully understand the ins and outs of it. And then, of course, that grew over time. But it was really around that time that that you finally grasp it. And so what you can cl- con- conclude from that is a lot of people out there who you see who, A, have never served in government or B, who did but didn't really focus on classification don't really understand it that much. And and that's why it's hard to sort of know what to trust out there. And with this current case with President Trump, obviously, is the reason why you're here and talking about all the different classifications. People aren't just interested in it for no reason. I've seen so many different attorneys and people that are known to be attorneys, they're pundits on TV, talking about the amateur hour that are some of President Trump's attorneys that we're seeing. Do you, is it, when you have this type of classified information, the human sourcing, things like that, can any old defense attorney be his attorney whenever it's dealing with matters like this? Or does he have to get somebody who also has clearances or do they have to be like read into it? Or how does that work? If he were charged and indicted, um, he would, if classified information is at issue, he would have to have attorneys who can get cleared. Um, there's a process for that, for criminal litigation. It happens all the time. It is typically a more limited clearance, meaning it's not something that's going to stick with you necessarily for your career. It's for that particular case. Um, but the attorney will be vetted more quickly than it would normally for like a normal year around year long background check or something like that. But they can diff- definitely get cleared to that level if they pass all the suitability criteria, which sometimes might be questionable. And with somebody like you that's worked in this field for a long time, for, for eight years, everyone's also saying this is unprecedented. Is this level of information that is be- that could be leaked or that is being handled inappropriately? Is it really unprecedented? Uh, you know, the, I guess the volume and sensitivity, sadly, we've kind of seen in recent years, we've had just working backwards, the Schulte case, which was the guy who leaked a lot of the CIA hacking tools, you know, that's tremendously damaging. I mean, that's stuff that can be, that's a all out there, right? I mean, mm-hmm. maybe not all, but a large chunk was released on the internet and that's stuff that's can and has been used against us by adversaries. So, um, you know, there's that case, there's Snowden, there's Manning, so the volume in those cases and the sensitivity, at least with Schulte and Manning, was sort of on par. I mean, but worse in that it was publicly released. Uh, here, it's obviously just the seniority level of the person uh, who committed that crime. Right. <laughs> Potential crime, I can say. Pretty far up there. And so when you're talking about researching all this and the DOJ and different and different groups that are doing the investigation, who all I'm sure there's many of the alphabet soup that are involved with this type of thing. Do they really try to put in a process to hurry this up because there is going to be so much national attention? And I, I feel like the longer this goes out, the slower the slower the information comes out. You almost can feel the country tightening in certain ways. Yeah, I mean, the media imperative is just getting your arms around the documents. And obviously, the FBI has been criticized a little bit by some folks by taking too long. I can understand why they did, uh, given all the sensitivities at issue. Um, and the need to not just go immediately search the house of a former president. But, you know, I think the media imperative was just getting their arms around the documents. Now we saw today there's some empty folders. People are speculating, do they really have all the documents yet? That's the real imperative. The case can take its time. As far as I'm concerned, there's reporting that they'll stop, uh, you know, not do anything during the election period, which makes perfect sense. Um, so, and, and I do think, you know, everyone's gotten very used to this amazing transparency that we've had with this case, with the court filings and stuff like that. That's obviously unusual and frankly unprecedented in criminal cases. We're about to go dark. <laughs> you know, we're, we're not going to have these court filings coming up um, anymore, even if the special master litigation continues, it, it, which is frankly really how it should be with a criminal investigation. Right. And I, I also understand on its face the reason why you don't do it in an election year, but President Trump is not on the ballot. Sure, the Republican Party is on the ballot, But if these are crimes that are rising to the level that is really making the entire Department of Justice pucker their buttholes up, Mm -hmm. how do you stop it? Like, do do you just stop talking about it or does the investigation continue? You just don't make any public statements about it. Yeah, I think the investigation will continue. I think, I mean, again, I always don't trust any real press reporting unless it's confirmed and this was anonymous reporting. But I I would imagine what the tack they'll take is they wouldn't do anything in terms of charges. Um, between now and the election, they'll continue their investigation. I think they might be a little careful about taking too prominent 
uh, steps in the investigation. But I think witness interviews and stuff like that will continue apace. They they can't stop that given the put aside the criminal case. There's like separate counterintelligence needs that that need to be satisfied now. And that pause, that operational pause or the PR pause, I guess it would be. Do you think that's because of what happened with Hillary Clinton in 2016? Uh, perhaps. Yeah. And I, I think there's just no harm here. Right. Like, again, as long as you, I mean, you're right, the investigation needs to continue. It's more of the PR pause. But um, as long as they're still doing all the investigative stuff they need, I don't see any harm in, in waiting on. Making and one harm. interesting aspect about your story that I just found out yesterday is that you are actually one of the people, the investigators who looked at Hillary Clinton's email. So you actually have eyes on I, understanding that you haven't seen what's at what was at mar lago but if you have to compare and contrast just on the classifications, can you do that? Is that something that you could do just on the classifications on the documents? Yeah, I mean, I think in total she had 22 emails that were sent to her that were identified as being top secret. Um, I, I can't guarantee I saw all of them, but I think I saw a, a fair chunk of them. And again, it, it's it's different really in two respects. One is, is the content of the information. Like I said on CNN yesterday, there, it was really something that goes on in D.C. all the time, which is staffers are trying to make their principal happy and keep them informed. And the only way they have to do that is over unclassified email. And so what they would try to do sometimes is just what what I call talking around a classified issue by speaking vaguely about it. I, I grew to be quite good about that. And most of my colleagues were over time. A lot of people are and her staffers just at least on 22 occasions, maybe not every time, but. Uh, just sort of went over the line of being a little too specific to where the documents were, I think, technically met the criteria for being classified. But like I said on CNN, I don't think a sort like a human source would not have been exposed. An intelligence method would not have been exposed. I, I mentioned it'd be a diplomatic ker kerfluffle, I think, at most if if that stuff had come out. Um, that's much different in the content of what we, you know, we haven't seen what's in those Trump documents yet. But you can just tell from the markings and knowing the types of information that goes to the president that what is behind there is infinitely more sensitive in terms of source and method information. And that's the content. And then there's just the context, right? She's getting unclassified emails from her staff on an unclassified system, probably hundreds, if not thousands a day, right? Mm -hmm. She's not, as the principal, it's not going to necessarily know, oh, that one email, that person got a little too specific about that. Mm. Whereas with the documents you saw in Trump's office, he, there's the classification cover pages on them, right? Plain as day. There's no question that he knew if he was looking at those documents, what they were, whereas she wouldn't have known necessarily that any of that stuff was top secret. That's interesting. And with, with President Trump now, and let's say they do go to an indictment, that's <clears throat> unprecedented. Like working in law enforcement and working within the CIA, would you guys even like chalk talk what would happen if you needed to indict a president or if a president was remanded to custody or something like that? No, I never once in our mind did <laughs> ever think about anything like that. I just don't know oh. how that even happens. Would you like what? No, you think I'm mean, regular I can, process. I can say, you know, from experience, one reason I'm a little I've been a little more measured than people you read on Twitter about the likelihood of charges is the U.S. government has a pretty terrible track record of holding senior officials to account mm. uh, when they've mishandled classified information. There's the John Deutsch case when he was CIA director. And I think what had a bunch of classified information at home, it looked the department of justice initially turned up sort of a blind eye to it. Then they started investigating. Then Clinton pardoned him. Uh, there's the David Petraeus case, right? Which was worked out of my office when that happened. Um, at least they tried right with him, but then they ultimately agreed to a pretty favorable to Petraeus uh, plea agreement. Um, and then, of course, the army, which could have taken some action against him, nothing happened to him as far as the army went. He he didn't, you know, receive any demotions in rank or anything. That Retired you as a four star pay. Yeah, yeah. You would have think about what would have happened to you, right? If oh like my that. god, man! Like yeah. I don't have my ID, the right ID card, putting it in the computer, and it's like, all right, well now you got thirty and thirty days. <laughs> you got to go to the brig or something right, like that. Right, and right. that's that's what really drives people nuts, like people that work in places like you've worked in skiffs that mm -hmm. to go to so many painstaking efforts i mean i'd never had any type of clearance that was important whatsoever except for to be like around the president with a gun doing security stuff other right. than that nothing and so even right. i know like this is not right and it's is it bizarre for you who for somebody that like you that has put eight years into doing this type of work 
to see almost one side of the political spectrum be dismissive about some of these things. Has that been shocking or par for the course? I mean, sadly, it's sort of the reality <laughs> uh, we're dealing with in our political situation today, I think. I mean, there's a bunch of other examples, right, where in terms of national security, people have turned a blind eye, people who know better, right, have, have mm -hmm. turned a blind eye to this. I mean, it is true, like mishandling of classified information happens all the time mm -hmm. in the media. And I do think we have to be careful about not over criminalizing that in that a lot of it's perfectly innocent. I, I know every almost in it, everyone I know at one point thought, oh, shoot, did I say something on a phone that I shouldn't have or email something that I shouldn't have or not mark something correctly? Like that kind of stuff happens a lot. We have to be very careful to not over criminalize that, particularly with senior folks. But I think the evidence so far we have here is well over the line of anything innocent <laughs> uh, whatsoever. Yeah, I would agree. So of all the things that are going on, if you had a crystal ball and you were going to predict, how do you think this thing plays out over the next, let's do next three months? What are we going to see? Yeah, I mean, I do think we'll go into a quiet phase first. Um, the intelligence community is going to be doing its work. One of the key things they'd have to do in working with the Department of Justice is identify which documents could form the basis of a charge. Um, you can tell your listeners they heard, heard it here first, but it, something you're going to hear about coming up is called the silent witness rule. And that's a legal construct where, at least in this context with classified information, that you could take a classified record and show it to the jury and the jury would see it unredacted and there would be a witness who would come and they would speak about the document in general terms. So they might be a classification expert from the CIA and they would say, ladies and gentlemen, the jury, see paragraph one, that contains identifying source information, um, it's harmful for X, Y, Z. See paragraph two, that contains SIGINT derived information, as you can tell from here. And that's sort of the level of specificity would it be. The jury would see it, the, odd, the people in the audience would not, and that document would not be made public. If that's been used in a lot of national security cases um, effectively, if that can be used here, that makes this case very, very easy. I think the hard thing is they've been able to do that in a lot of espionage act cases could you do that in a case against a former president of the united states you know we'll, we'll have to see if the judge will go for it but but that's but no one's gonna know right like while they're preparing for charges no one's gonna be confident that that rule is gonna be upheld so you're kind of gonna have to have plan a and then plan b uh if the judge doesn't uphold that rule and so that that's basically that dot that process of selecting the right documents to use is, is going to be a huge part of what's going on between DOJ and the intelligence community going forward. Um, and the last thing I wanted, ahead, and the last thing ahead. I wanted to ask you about this process because I we talked at the beginning that if you're going to go in and you're going to go into a president's home and you're going to do all these different things, <laughs> is there any similarities to like when the Justice Department will bring a RICO charge? Like for for most people, you know, when a RICO charge coming. They basically got you. If they got enough to charge you with Rico, then they they have you. Do you think this is essentially that same type of thing? If you're being that public facing, this open about it, they got them. Potentially, I mean, I I think that most recent special master filing was probably the most telling document because DOJ obviously had a very clear idea of where it was going when they conducted the search. Then they had three weeks to process the returns, right? If they had, and this isn't one person in a room, I imagine this right. is a yeah. ton of people. Yeah. Right, right. So, so they've had three weeks to go through all that. So they have a much better idea now. Like, did the doc where the documents were located? How many there were? What did they they even been to look at what they say? So I think they have a much better idea of the the likelihood that they might bring a case now. They probably even had some other witnesses come forward. I wouldn't be surprised given the the notoriety of this, and and based on that. You know, if they were being more reluctant about charges, they could have been a little milder and, and used a lot more measured language in that special master filing. But they they weren't. They turned it on and, and really revealed quite a bit. Um, so I think that was the most the biggest indicator. And there was an interview with Bill Barr this morning. He's actually on Fox News and he was talking about that the government actually showed patience and asking so many times because that's not something that would happen typically. If somebody has classified documents to this level and they're not supposed to, they're not emailing you several times and asking nicely for you to bring it back. Do you agree with that assessment from the former oh, attorney general? Yeah. And, and again, I can understand why initially they gave them chance number one because NARA clearly suspected for good reason that he had some documents at home. So they gave him that first chance. 
I can understand why you wouldn't uh, go perform a search at a former resident's home at that point. But if you read their filing, they indicate that um, even before the FBI had even looked at the NARA documents, they already knew that there were what they called dozens of boxes containing classified information or included in that. How they know that is a mystery, but it's pretty amazing that they knew that before even looking really at them. And they issued that grand jury subpoena on May 11th at that point. But that's that's the point, right, where that's where normally a search would have been done. Right. And again, to go back to the Petraeus case, that guy's home was searched by the FBI. It didn't get a lot of attention at the time because, you know, they kept it all quiet and Petraeus did too for good reason. But, you know, that was... And that's what that it would have happened here, general, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But because that's what Trump is the one that's put it out there. Yeah. Yeah, he was a Petraeus four-star general, CIA director. You know, some people consider him a war hero. That guy was humiliated by having his home searched because he provided classified information to his girl or his, the woman he was having an affair with. Um, so imagine what that was like for him. So I, I, Trump was definitely given the benefit of the doubt here numerous times. Well, the, I guess the only really good news is at least law professors will have a lot to talk about in the next 50, 60 years about this case. They'll be going through it, I'm sure, with precedents and things like that. Brian, thanks for your expertise. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot for having me on. Interesting conversation all around. I don't know. I think that he's right that this is going to be a slow play, like now that the election season coming up. How do you guys feel about that with what he is saying will might be an investigational pause or just a PR kind of pause where they're not going to be talking about this case to the American public? Do you guys think that's the right decision or the wrong decision? So while I, I will say that the, the wheels of justice move slow in this country, regardless of the level of crime, the process of going through everything takes takes a while. Now, I think if you are going to tell me that this is very important. I would like to see people put some effort into it and, and try to expedite it as best they could, as opposed to slow playing it and then, you know, rolling it out closer to election. Cause then it just, it seems disingenuous and it's makes me think, well, was this really that important? If, if you didn't make it a priority, uh, you know, two years ago, a year and a half ago, whatever it was, or is this really just a ploy to impact his, candidacy and if it is all right we'll just you know I, they're never gonna say right. that. i think the say, best they just say thing that, they can do say that. i guess what i was getting at is that i'm just kind of jaded by all of it i and like to the point where i just like i don't know and i think the best thing they could do is don't play around like i feel like you open your political playbook and it's like how can we best utilize this for whatever right. it's like no we're all so sick of that just be as transparent as fucking possible and just chop right. it up in the best time possible. Like, I don't know. I, I, does that make any sense? What no, it does. No. And I think that that's kind of what like, what he was talking about yeah, in, yeah. in the interview was he was saying that there is so many different elements here to this case. And one, anybody else, these steps would have taken place right away. And they right. it showed how much they knew this was a politically volatile thing by being like, come on, please, man. Like, these are... <laughs> These are human sources like we have all these different documents that we need back. And it took a year and a half. Normally, you'd be in jail like that. You take right. those types of documents. So I don't know how they make I, again. And he said the same thing, basically, that he doesn't know how they make the case to the American public. If there's all kinds of sensitive information, because you're not going to be able to say what was in there. It's a shit show. It's just going to be a shit show in American politics for the next however many years are probably going to be a shit show, too. So which yeah. is great. But do we just accept that? Do we just accept that our political world in this country has become just an abomination and we just live accordingly? Or do we make an effort to bring it back to some sort of semblance of what it once was? And we that almost feels like a, a fool's errand, though. Like, I don't know how you would eliminate because you'd need to eliminate social media. You didn't need to eliminate yeah, those all days these different are dead, I just yeah. think I think those days are dead, like because you have such readily available information. This is something that years ago you wait until the entire situation kind of unfolds and they drop one big article explaining it. Yeah. Now it's every single thing. There's a new update, new update, and it's going to be twisted and turned and twisted and turned. And eventually it just gets back to the same thing. It's a football team like political po politics right now are a football team. And you just want to see your football team win. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, um, and you don't care what it does to the other side. Mm -mm. Speaking of, can we talk about the speech, the optics of 
Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So if you zoom out, it's supposed to be like red, white, and blue on either side of we're talking, I'm talking about the speech that Biden gave last week where he had Marines behind him, but ultimately a lot of people didn't like all, I, all I took out of it was this close up of him with it's at night and there's this red background on the building and it looks evil. <laughs> like it does look <laughs> yeah. bad. And I always think you have like a hundred people doing PR for you. How, yep. how does this happen? If you have the blue behind you. And it's, you know? <laughs> it's so infuriating because it was a like great what? speech. Like the speech but that he was talking it... about, like the substance of the speech was good. And now people are just talking even a week later, people are just talking about the optics behind it. And it's like, that's an important speech. But I also thought, where does he give this speech? That doesn't come off as incredibly political. He can't do it in front of a joint session of Congress that me and my wife were talking about this yesterday. He can't do it in front of the joint session of Congress because all those crazy MAGA Republicans, the ones that he's talking about, like your Marjorie Green Taylors and your fucking Lauren Boebert's and the, like that ilk, they're all going to be screaming nonsense. Whatever you're doing, a joint session of Congress, if you're talking about that, you're going to do it from the Rose Garden. No, because then you're making the White House political. You can't do a political speech in the White House. All these different scenarios. Where do you do it? So you pick a spot. Why the fuck do it at nighttime? Why did you do it at nighttime? Yeah, so I was going to say red lighting behind you with Mar I would not have had the Marines there. I don't care what the other like what Trump has done, what um, any other previous. Pre like, I just would not have had them because you knew that was going to take away from the speech. Like you knew that that was going to be a talking point. And mm -hmm. then again, I feel like I don't know who on his team didn't look at the close up and be like, you know, this looks kind of fucking evil. <laughs> like, you know, like uh -huh. maybe we shouldn't have this background. Like, I don't maybe know. Maybe they were just... leaning into the dark Brandon meme. Like, I don't and that's know. what they were trying to do where Sickle they could put mode. like the red lasers coming out of his eyes or whatever. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, but it just, it was, I think it was a big miss. Cause that's what a lot of people took. Out. Yeah. I don't know. Chaps for starters, yeah. I would have done it inside or during the day. So it wasn't dark. That that would have been, you know, first I would have done about it, where else to do it. My ultimate answer came down to I would have done it in that long hallway where Obama yeah. gave the speech about bin Laden being killed. That would have probably like, been good there. Yeah. What about like a. Uh, six Flags Mc, McDonald's <laughs> have a little six flags. That's there. Sitting there having some nuggets. Only the boot shaped ones. Go the best to kind. Kumba at Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay. Ride one of their main roller coasters attracting yep. the old Kumba. We had a very important speech on a roller coaster once you and I, the Coney Island Cyclone. It's, it's true. About Supreme Court Supreme justices. Court? You can yeah. look that video up. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I just wanted to talk about that too real quick. That was no, been, it's important. It's important because you're right, Kate. Nobody lists. Nobody has any idea. I would say 80% of people didn't listen to the speech. They just saw the pictures. Yeah. Big yeah. Optics. Nobody's listening to speeches. And that's the problem with somebody who can't speak. I was listening to some of the old speeches that like Barack Obama used to give. There was this hope. The hope speech was it came up on my YouTube page. And I was like, oh, I'm going to check this out. The one that he gave at this big park in Chicago. And it was just so unbelievably well or uh, like he was an orator. Like he's just so good at it. And thinking about the last two years or the last two presidencies, you're like, God damn, dude, like somebody. And now, but Obama can't even speak now. He says, um, uh, uh, uh whenever he's talking, that's all the time me. Too. I'm a huge, um, lady. Well, I know. And I listen back to our podcast and it makes me nuts. How, if anybody out there has a good tip on stopping, go to the like air that. force school. Okay. That's the big thing that they taught us there. You do 60 minute period of instruction. You're only allowed to say it three times. Really? Maybe yeah. I will go to the air force school then. I I'm think for Obama, the air force. He's probably just out of practice when you're not used to, when you don't have to give speeches every day and speak to the media or speak to Congress each and every day, just like any other skill. You probably. Oh, it's like reverse cowgirl. You don't you don't use yeah. it. You forget you're a squeaky wheel. Yeah, you, you, do I go back down? Do I go back down again? Throat. Yeah. Am I uh, am I supposed to go back down? I don't mm -hmm. remember. This has been too long. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe so many people around him are vabbing. Maybe that's the issue. And he's just he's, horned he up. He can't think about it. Classic horny Obama. Maybe huh. the Republicans sent in a bunch of abbers. Yep. If you're looking for yeah. a new master bedroom to vab in, make mm. sure that you go with our <laughs> friends at Cross Country Mortgage because they're our sponsor for today's segment of Save Rounds and Alibis. They're the best Save Rounds and Alibis sponsor that there is. We've known that they are going to... Got, I, I've been looking in on all the different websites for Chicago area houses because we're probably going to move in the next year or so. And it's been 
I'm dreading the process, but I know that cross country mortgage is going to be there every sure. step of the way, selling and buying and doing all those different things and having somebody that's dedicated to me is going to be great. You'll have that too. If you go to cross country mortgage by going to ccm.com slash barstool. Now cross country mortgage, LLC and MLS three zero two nine. All loans are subject to underwriting approval. www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. I say all that shit really fast, but click on it. You're going to find out a bunch of stuff and honest to God, cross country mortgage is fantastic i actually signed up with them i have somebody that uh was with me in my old house and i said look i'm trying to buy a house in chicago now i just bought this house here obviously i don't want to take a bath because you play like you have to pay closing costs on both spots which can end up being forty, fifty thousand dollars at both places that are coming out of pocket. So I'm like, how am I going to reduce this? And they're coming up with the plan, like to make the least amount of money come out of my pocket as possible, which I really appreciate. And they're going to have like three or four different options for me for different types of loans, things that I would have never, because I'm, I'm sure Kate's this way too. Uh, Cons works in this field or has done work in this field. When I start looking at a bunch of numbers, my brain just is like, nope. it's like when I'm hung over at a diner and you hand me that like 60 page menu, I just go cross side, <laughs> but he just give me the fries and a milkshake. Yeah, I'm exactly on. right. That's it. how this is. But they're going to have three or four different options that are going to be put in front of me and I'll be able to pick me and my wife will be able to pick that way. Super easy. Cross country mortgage is awesome. All right, let's do some save rounds and alibis. Nick is here now. Nick, what do you got, pal? Yeah, I got two things. So, um, Number one, thank you, everyone, and the abundance of people that reached out with violations over the weekend. Mm -hmm. There were a ton mm -hmm. of violations. I'm not going to say who it was because, you know, we leave that for the show. Yeah. You can draw your own conclusions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and and secondly, I was in Chicago this weekend. I just encourage everyone. I know a lot of people like to go to these college football games, but if you ever get a chance to go to a pro wrestling show, a big one, a big arena, they're not that expensive. Just go. It's a great experience. I went there. I was in Chicago this weekend. Had a ball. Um, that's my. That, those are my safe rounds. Go to. A, go I want to go to one. Show. It's great. I want to go to a small one too. There's this place in Brooklyn uh, before COVID that they used to have. It was a stand up open mic night where you do comedy, and then immediately afterwards, all the comics went down into the basement and you followed them, and they all wrestled each other. And I wanted to go to that so bad. It was we like a. You don't gotta. You don't gotta say no more. I will make sure we go to a, a show in New Jersey. New Jersey's big yeah. time for for independent pro wrestling because of all the nights of Columbuses they have around. Oh, here. the backyard shit <laughs> where they're Blair and Slipknot mm -hmm. just beating each other with chairs. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Nick, yeah. who is the super chubby uh, guy that wore like black tights and he would smash his butt cheeks onto people's chest? Rikishi. Oh my god! Wait, That's wait, Rikishi. wait! Before you answer that. Rikishi. Did he have a slight limp and kidney cancer? No, he didn't. It wasn't no. fat. Was Leonard, it Fat no. Leonard? No, it wasn't. Is that where he's hiding? It wasn't. I don't think mm -hmm. so. But I went when I was in Jacksonville, Nick, I went to one of those things and I legitimately thought that dude killed somebody. Like the way that he put his ass cheeks on his, their chest, I thought that that person was dead. Yeah, I mean, there was there was Yokozuna used to do the bonsai drop, but then Rikishi was who's like, you know, he part of the Samoan dynasty. He had his whole gimmick was just him in a thong with his big cottage cheese ass just shoving it in people's faces. And did he smash somebody's ribs, like break somebody's ribs? Eh, probably. You know, we'll never know. It's all yeah. a work. We're all it's being worked game. out there. True. That's the dream to be one of those ladies that guys, if I was a, a bigger lady, which I'm working on it, um, where guys would pay me in a hotel room to just sit on them. Squash them. Yeah. Squash them. I get mm -hmm. to jump on a bed and make money. Or do cake farts. Smash a cake with my cheeks. Sure thing. Sure thing. Mm -hmm. Cods, what do you got for save rounds? So are we going to talk about last week's draft? Are we going to do it where we talk about the previous draft before the current draft? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So I'll save that. Um, so go watch two, it. If you haven't watched it because it was a long yeah. weekend, go watch the draft. We did a military draft of uh, the Barstool personalities last Thursday. So make sure you go to the YouTube page and check that it out. We'll talk about that team. on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this Saturday. Chaps. What? Do you have any idea? Is nope. it the Roadrunners playing Army? Oh, yeah. Roadrunners Army. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So Chaps huge, is a huge Roadrunner versus, fan. Chaps is it yeah. down at UTSA? No, no, it's at West Point. West Point. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to take a cruise up the Hudson to West Point this year and go to a football game via boat. I just love riding boats. 
Yeah, I mean, that's I, all my friends who have done that tailgate have said it's unbelievable. It's a yeah. great time. So I would recommend that if you want to do that. For One sure. of these days making it happen. So looking forward to that game on Saturday. Yeah, we can that's talk about that on Thursday, too. See yeah. if we can have a bet that you'll get out of again. Um, all right. We're probably not going to have a bet. Honestly, why would I do that if you already ha- were such an integrity violator that I can't trust you? Like, so why would I do a bet? Because I would do it. If I lost, I would automatically do it. You won't. So there's no reason for us to even have a bet. Um, so but we could talk about that on Thursday. <laughs> I don't really have anything. We'll be back here then. I don't know what the draft is going to be. We'll talk about that after the show, I guess. And we'll put it out there to see if we have uh, any ideas. By the way, um, I have a couple save rounds. I've been getting a couple Jody stories that mm-hmm. I'm compiling. If you have a good Jody story, like a real epic one that you've heard through the grapevine that you can relay that whatever um, hit me up, let me know. And then also, too, I had someone reach out to me. Um, the 10th anniversary of the attack on Bastion is coming up. And that was the most aircraft that we've had destroyed mm-hmm. since the Vietnam War. Um, the first time guys in what do you call aviation mm-hmm. got in the fight since like World War II. So um, if you have stories that you think are important and anniversaries coming up that are important to you, that you want to talk about, that you want to share um, I would love to hear from you. So hit me up. And, and too, if you just have any epic story that like blows people's dicks off and flaps off in the smoke pit, hit me up because I want to start sharing more stories just from the veteran community out there. Um, I don't care what you do for a living now. Uh, if you have a good yarn, I want to hear it. So let me know and maybe we'll have you on the show. We'll see. So that's it for me, I think. All right. We'll be back here on Thursday. It's on the retreat.